afternoon. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and welcome to another exciting broadcast with us here at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know we've got a lot of familiar faces in the crowd today, and so welcome back. But if you are new to what we do, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world through over 40 live free monthly interactive broadcasts. Everything we do stays up on our YouTube channel forever, so you can check out like 2,500 past broadcasts, including I think 15 with our speaker today uh, on our YouTube channel. And I'm really, really excited for a number of reasons. One, this is February, which means this is our entire month dedicated solely to amazing women in STEM. If you want to hear from some of the most incredible explorers and scientists around the planet, check it out this month. Lots of camera spots still available and some special events still to be announced as we wrap up the month in the weeks to come. Two, we are going to be diving in today with a really special organization. I'm going to be highlighting their uh, website a lot during this broadcast, but I really encourage you all to check out polarbearsinternational.org, some really amazing resources there to keep the learning going when you're done. Now, before I introduce our speaker, I want to note we do have a Kahoot today. There are already a bevy of you involved in the Kahoot, which is great. If you're joining us on YouTube as well, head to kahoot.it, use this game pin, uh, and we'll be doing a little four question quiz between the talk and Q&A portion, an extra way to keep it nice and interactive. Now, Without further ado, I'm going to welcome in Elisa McCall, and she is the Director of Conservation Outreach for the aforementioned Polar Bears International. She is one of my very favorite people we ever bring on the program because there are few people on this planet that are as enthusiastic about anything as Elisa is about polar bears. So she's going to blow your mind today. I'm so excited for you all to meet her. And without further ado, Elisa, welcome back to Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. So nice to have you. <laughs> so nice to be here. Thanks, Jesse, and thanks everyone for joining today. Yeah, it's great to talk about polar bears. <laughs> it is. I know you've got a lot to share with us. If you want to bring up your presentation, you are good to go. I'll welcome in all our YouTubers too. We've got people from all around the world today uh, ready for our largest land carnivore exploration in the Arctic. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Can you see this? Uh, I can indeed. Perfect. Full screen. If you want to drag the little two, uh, oh, now we're into the infinite distance together. There we are. Beautiful. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, so my name is Elisa. Um, as Jesse mentioned, I work for Polar Bears International, and I currently live in Whitehorse in the Yukon in Canada. And I'd like to acknowledge that I am on the traditional territory of the Kwan and Dan First Nation and the Ta'an Kwichon Council. I love living in the Yukon. I'm very fortunate to live in such a beautiful place. And I have no polar bears where I live, which is kind of fortunate, uh, which I'll talk about later. But I do travel. I work um, with polar bears most often out of Churchill, Manitoba, also in Canada. And I'll talk a little bit more about that too. But I've been studying polar bears for just over 12 years. Uh, today, I'm just gonna tell you a few of my very favorite facts, talk a little bit about why we're worried about polar bears, but how we can help them. And then just touch briefly on a couple of cool research projects we're working on. And then I'm happy to take as many questions as I can about whatever polar bear related topic that you're interested in. So at Polar Bears International, our goal is to keep polar bears in the wild, in the Arctic indefinitely. And we do this through a mix of research, education, media, and advocacy. And advocacy means we're kind of speaking on behalf of polar bears. Why should we help them? Why are they important? But a few of my favorite facts at first. Did you know that polar bears, they are the biggest bear species on the planet? There are eight different bear species, including black bears and brown bears and panda bears, Polar bears are the very biggest, and they are the most carnivorous bear. So most bears we think of as omnivores, just like us. So we can eat fruits and vegetables and meats and proteins and all that stuff. Polar bears can eat everything and they do, but mostly they focus on meat and fat. And I'll get to that as well, but they are the most carnivorous of all the bears. And if you compare that like to a, to a panda bear who mostly eats, you know, plants, it's quite, quite different. So they're very unique in that way. And polar bears are also the only marine bear. They're the only bear whose life is tied to the ocean, which is very cool. So you can kind of think of this as an ocean bear. And in fact, their Latin name, Ursus Maritimus, means sea bear. They really, truly need ocean, but specifically sea ice, the frozen ocean. And that's because of their diet. So I mentioned they're the most carnivorous, and that's because their main prey species is seals. Polar bears rely on a diet of seal blubber because it has so many calories. And if you think about how hard it is to live in the Arctic, it's cold, you're a big bear, you need a lot of fuel, you need a lot of energy, and you can only get that through these really high fat sources like 
a seal. So on the right here, you see a bearded seal. And these are seals that also live on the ice. But a polar bear can't outswim seals in the water. So the bears have to use the ice to catch the seals. So they either wait patiently by a seal hole, like this bear is doing, or when a seal comes out to rest on the ice, a polar bear might sneak up on the seal from behind it and catch it. But the biggest things I want you to take away here is that polar bears need seal blubber and they can only get seal blubber if they have sea ice. So that's the biggest thing to know about polar bears. And polar bears have huge home ranges. They have such a unique habitat or home because sea ice is always moving. If you think of a brown bear or a black bear in North America, they're walking through the forest and there, there are seasonal changes and, and things do shift. But imagine if a brown bear was walking through the forest and it was moving beneath its feet. That would be wild. But that's how it is for polar bears. Their habitat is literally moving beneath their feet as they walk. And they might have to swim sometimes to get to the next chunk of sea ice. And some of them have to go huge, huge distances to find enough seals. Just one polar bear needs a lot of seals and only seals have the calories it needs. So polar bears really are adapted so nicely for this habitat. You can tell their fur, you know, they've got that clear fur. It looks white, but it's actually transparent. Two layers of thick fur, sharp, thick claws to give them grip on the ice and a big layer of body fat to keep them warm. And then the cubs, imagine being a little baby <laughs> in this in this environment. It's just amazing. Polar bear moms are incredible. They have about one to three cubs every year, one or every three years, sorry. Um, one or two cubs is more common than having three. And so the mom keeps the cubs for about two and a half years until they're weaned, and then she'll have another litter. So polar bear moms reproduce about every three years. But the cubs grow so, so, so fast. When they're born, they're not much bigger than a stick of butter. And then within just a few months, they can be 30 pounds. So they grow extremely fast because their mom's milk is so fatty and has so many calories. It's the fattiest milk of any animal that is found on land. So that's how cubs are able to grow so fast. Again, the calories and the energy that ultimately come from the seal fat that they get on the sea ice. So they really are just the most incredible bear. They're so interesting. They have the most unique habitat. It's cold, it's windy. It's just moving all the time and these bears make a living out there. And just to show you quickly where they live. So I know most of you today are from North America, if not all of you. Every little shape here, this is a different polar bear population. So scientists from Canada, Alaska, Norway, Greenland, and Russia have gotten together. This is where the polar bears live and they've split the polar bears into 19 different populations just to really help us humans manage the bears and kind of know different groups of bears and how we can help them because polar bears are experiencing different things in different areas of the arctic so that's just to give you a visual so right at the top there's no polar bears in antarctica only in the arctic and when we when we talk about polar bears and arctic sea ice and how polar bears need sea ice they're not the only animal that needs arctic sea ice the entire arctic food chain is built around the sea ice in fact we like to say that sea ice is to the ocean what soil is to a forest. It really grows the base of the whole food chain in the Arctic. So you algae are like the plants of the Arctic. So they actually grow up inside the sea ice and they feed the little microorganisms like the diatoms and copepods, which feed the fish, which feed the seals and the whales, which feed the polar bears. And of course, people are a huge part of the Arctic. People live all around the Arctic and also rely on sea ice to access food and to travel. So we think that the Arctic sea ice is such an important habitat that we want to help protect it for polar bears, but for everyone else as well. And did you know that no matter where you are, even if you're watching from Texas right now, which I know there's some of you from Texas, sea ice does affect your climate and your kind of weather. It, it's so cool that way. We like to call sea ice, the earth air conditioner. It is so large and white and reflective that sea ice actually reflects sunlight and warmth away from the earth and helps cool the entire planet. So no matter where you are, sea ice is having an impact by helping us cool our whole planet. So important, so neat. Let's all help keep Arctic sea ice in the Arctic for polar bears, but for us too. If we do nothing to help Arctic sea ice, so we do know that we're losing Arctic sea ice right now. The world is warming. We have been burning a lot of fossil fuels. And when we burn fossil fuels, they release carbon emissions. And carbon traps heat in the atmosphere, just like a heat trapping blanket. 
And the more fossil fuels we burn, the more we trap heat. So we need to switch to cleaner energies. If we don't, if we did nothing to change what we're doing, we could lose most of the world's polar bears by the end of the century due to losing Arctic sea ice. But the good news is we do have the solutions. We know exactly what the problem is. We've got too many emissions in the atmosphere. We know how to change it. And what we can do is we can shift our energies to use more renewable energies from nature. We can use more solar power. We can use more wind. We can even use hydro or water power. They're not perfect either, but they're better than fossil fuels. So we can shift the fossil fuels we do burn because we still have a need for them in some ways. We can do a lot more efficiently. We can burn them so they're more effective for us. But the best thing we can do, especially if you're young and you don't yet you know, have the power to vote, one of the best things you can do is talk about it. You can talk about what you care about in your environment, whether it's polar bears or your own fishing hole or you know your farm or just your neighborhood. You can talk about what you care about with your friends, with your family, with your teachers, with your principal. And we can talk together about ways that we can help the world and help keep Arctic sea ice in the Arctic and just help protect ourselves in the future. So we are while we're working on that, <laughs> back to polar bears more specifically, Polar Bears International, we are working to keep polar bears in the Arctic. So climate change is the number one factor. And while we're working on that, we want to learn more about the bears. There's still so much we don't know. There's a lot of really cool areas of polar bear science that we're learning more about right now. And these are some of the different things that we're working on. Indigenous knowledge is a huge topic. There are so many indigenous peoples and cultures in the North that know so much about polar bears. And we can help make sure that that knowledge is recorded and being listened to and being acknowledged and incorporated into what we're doing. That's very important. There's also a lot to know about polar bear denning. Denning is when moms and cubs, when the cubs are just born and the moms are in their dens with their cubs, it's a really vulnerable time. We wanna make sure these families have a quiet, protected space to have their dens and we can help protect those dens. But as humans move up into the North more and there's more like oil drilling and industrial activity, Dens in some areas are in need of more protection. So we have a couple different projects working on denning. Genetics is booming right now. Knowing what the polar bear genetics are will help us better protect certain areas that have really critical genetics, uh, which is a really cool topic. But the ones I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna briefly touch on human bear interactions because this is a rising concern across the North and then tracking. Tracking is super cool. And if you're ever interested to see where some polar bears are right now, you can check out the polarbearsinternational.org bear tracker. Every week we update it with different locations of where actual polar bears are in Hudson Bay in Canada. And you can follow these bears all through the winter as they roam the Hudson Bay sea ice. It's a super, super neat tool to use. Uh, you can go on the left and like find what bear you wanna track. And we do this every year. It's a really neat thing, really neat tool. But one of the drawbacks with this sort of work is that all of these bears you see, all these little numbers, each one is an adult female. And that's because we can only collar adult females with GPS collars. Males have these kind of pylon shaped heads with necks that are thicker than their skulls. So they pull collars right off, right away. And then some adults are still growing. So we don't want to put a collar on them. So all of these are adult females. But that does mean that we're missing a huge chunk of the population. What are the other bears doing? So we started working with 3M. That's the company that makes post-it notes. And they're helping us figure out a fur tracker. So we, this is an older model now. We've since updated what we're doing, but we are innovating new technology to simply stick a tracker to a bear's fur. And then this will naturally fall out when the bear molts in the spring. And we hope that these tags could be used on any bear that we want to track, especially ones that have maybe come into contact with humans. So this will be a pretty cool potential conservation game changer for polar bears. We are putting these out on wild polar bears already as we're tweaking the design and they are working. So we're really excited about it. And we hope that these trackers could be used on other species in the future that might need some help with conservation. And we're gonna be testing these on black bears soon as well. That's kind of an exciting new piece of technology. Um, and so I've mentioned a couple times about these human bear interactions. And this is a rising concern because what's going on is that as we lose Arctic sea ice in some areas, 
if the bears can't be on the ice, then of course they're forced to be on the land. So we are seeing polar bears spend longer periods of time on land. And I've already mentioned that polar bears need sea ice to find their food. So if a polar bear doesn't have sea ice, they get stuck on land and they get hungry. And that might mean that they are more likely to enter settlements or come near people to find a food source. And we are seeing this happen in some areas. So this is something that we are getting on top of in Polar Bears International. We're working with communities across the North to help them protect themselves because we don't want them to have negative bear encounters. But at the same time, we do want to keep Polar Bears in the wild. So we're helping develop technologies um, that can that are non-lethal, that will make sure these bears stay in the wild, but people can also protect themselves. And this is really important to us. One of the different things we're working on is radar. So we are testing radar and we're using artificial intelligence to teach this radar what a polar bear looks like. So we, this is a bit, a bit of an older version of it, but we've come a long way. So we've had to train this radar to be like, okay, this this is what a polar bear looks like. This is a caribou. This is a wolf. This is a fox. This is a human on a snowmobile, but this is a polar bear. So that when the radar in the future sees a polar bear in the far distance, it can alert the humans. It can either turn a light on or sound a siren or send you a text message. That's how cool this technology is. Imagine getting a text message saying, oh, there's a polar bear at the dump. Don't go drop your garbage off right now. That's kind of what we're working on with this technology. So we are testing this and we are getting really great results. So this is an example. You're going to see this camera move a little bit. All of that is just being done by the computer. So not a human is not moving this right now. There's a radar tracking this polar bear. It's alerted us that there's a bear. So we can log on and see that there's a bear and then warn people, okay, don't, don't go out right now. There's a polar bear here. So our ultimate goal is to get these units into more communities and allow them a chance to have a better warning system when a polar bear is approaching their community. So they know don't go to the dump. They know get the kids inside right now. There's a polar bear nearby. So we'll see how that plays out, but we're really excited about this technology and moving forward with it. At the same time, we're also doing a lot of education. On the right there, that's a bear-proof garbage bin. So that's a residential bin in Churchill, Manitoba. So the bears, if they wander into town, they're not getting any food rewards because they can't get to the garbage. And then on the left, these are examples of flares and bear bangers and bear spray. And we always encourage people in polar bear country to carry something like that with you to scare a bear off if it approaches you. So this is a definitely a rising area of concern. We've also created kids coloring books to help teach children about how to be safe when you live with polar bears. Most of us maybe live with black or brown bears or no bears at all, um, but when you live with polar bears, it's a bit of a different thing, especially since it's quite seasonal. So this is just to show Polar Bears International is really committed to this and keeping everybody safe, keeping the bears safe and definitely keeping the people safe. And I'm gonna start wrapping up here, but one quick shout out, International Polar Bear Day is coming up. It is on February 27th, so at the end of this month, we're going to be pushing out a lot of really fun polar bear facts. We're going to be talking specifically more about moms and cubs. So check it out on our website or social media. Um, we'll have activities and all sorts of fun things for folks to do. And so here, Jesse, I think this is a great time to show that video, if you don't mind, to kind of wrap up the talk. It's just like two minutes long. Absolutely. Let's bring that up. Elisa, thank, thank you so you. much. As I dive in with this video for everyone, you guys can find this on YouTube too if you want to follow up with us and check it out a little later as well. Future generations of people and polar bears depend on the decisions and plans that we make today. A polar bear's life cycle is almost exclusively tied to the sea ice. Because polar bears rely on sea ice to hunt, to breed, and sometimes to den, sea ice loss from climate change is their biggest threat and the reason the bears are listed as vulnerable on the IUCN's red list of threatened species. What we learn about climate change impacts on polar bears in Hudson Bay can be applied across the Arctic to help conserve other populations. Climate change is already affecting some populations of polar bears. Since we get most of our energy from fossil fuels, we are producing huge amounts of carbon dioxide. You see, regular amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere act like a blanket around the Earth, trapping heat and keeping our planet at a stable temperature. However, when we burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas for energy, we pump rampant amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This buildup thickens the blanket, 
trapping too much heat, disrupting the climate, and melting Arctic sea ice. When Arctic waters are cold enough, the top layer freezes into a special type of ice called sea ice. Sea ice is to the ocean what soil is to a forest. It supports the entire Arctic food chain. Food from this marine ecosystem also sustains northern communities. The key to getting the climate back to functioning the way it should and to preserving a future for polar bears across the Arctic is to move away from using fossil fuels for energy altogether. The most important thing we can do is vote with the climate in mind to let our leaders know we support a swift transition to renewable energy sources. In the meantime, we can directly participate in and learn more about our local and regional renewable energy options. We can all make a difference outside our own households by influencing where our energy comes from. Because together, we can make sure that polar bears roam the Arctic sea ice for generations to come. All right. Alisa, we're back in your presentation. If you have anything additional to show us, I'll get rid of our my screen share there and you're you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, just one more slide. I just wanted to thank you all. That video just kind of summarizes a lot of what I spoke about. So I think it's a good way to end. Um and yeah, I just wanted to say you can tell I love polar bears. I think they're really neat. One of the coolest things about polar bears is anything we do for them, we do for ourselves. Uh, they're a really special animal, and I think they're worth protecting. And bonus that we protect ourselves, anything we do. So thank you so much for joining in today. I know I go through things a little bit quickly, and I just touch on some like high level topics, but I want to leave a lot of room for your questions, and I can dive into any topic a little bit deeper, whatever you'd like to talk about. So thanks, Jesse, and thanks everyone who joined. Today. Thank you, everyone. Apologies for my uh, video deciding to start playing the next YouTube video while I was frantically trying to click it <laughs> off there. I apologize. Uh, before we dive in with questions, and I'm really excited for all your queries, both on YouTube, we've got a ton of live classes with us. We are going to dive in with our Kahoot. So four quick questions, test your understanding, have a little bit of fun. You don't win anything but you do win Elisa and I's everlasting respect. And I think that's that's pretty good. That's a good start. Uh, so if you want to dive in with a game pin, it's 653-6424. A lot of you are already in, which is great. I'm going to get underway in a second. If you're new to Kahoot, the faster you answer, the more points you get. Uh, so be quick on that trigger figure on your devices, uh, and we'll, we'll play along together. Let's do this thing, folks. And then I'm going to head to our Emeryville class uh, for our first question after that. Here we go. And Elisa, you can give us hints when there's a few seconds to go. If you've got three <laughs> okay. questions. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Ooh. Okay. Multi-select. There's going to be more than one answer here. Could be two. Could be all four. Could be three. We don't know. Polar bears live in which of these countries? Canada, the U.S., Norway, Russia. No one's answered yet. Oh, we've, we've tricked them a little bit. Oh, five. Get those answers in eight more seconds, folks. We talked about a few of these countries today. We showed an overlay of the map on the world that might have included, I don't know, a lot of you were stuck. A lot of you didn't even put in an answer. It was too panicky. <laughs> but Canada, yes. And then all three of the other countries. They are in the U.S., they are in Norway, and they are in Russia. Greenland as well. And that's it. Yes? Oh. Yes. Okay. You, yes. Yes. Unless one goes off course. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Um, helpful piranha, which is about as far a name as you can get from a polar bear, is currently in our lead. But we're going to see how it goes as the leaderboard develops. Yes. Polar bears eat most of their food in the summer. True or false? Mm, that's when I eat most of my food. Like that is it's a really <laughs> yeah. good time. I'm burning energy. I want to eat a lot of snacks. Yeah. What do we think? We learned a little about where polar bears like to eat today. Let's see, 63 answers to this one. People were on the ball with this one. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, all right. And the answer is false. And so explain why this is briefly before we go to question three. Yeah, usually in the summer, the bears are on land. So they don't have access to seals, which they do in the winter when the ice is frozen. So By the way, this is a, a weird segue. But I wanted to say to you, Lisa, I saw my first harbor seal this year. And I was really excited to see one in the wild. But they're such a special. And they look very delicious, right? I can see the polar bears alert. Um, Super tasty. Yeah. Creative Vibex takes our lead, and we've got a wolf. We've got a, an Arctic-ish animal that's uh, rolling up the leaderboard as well. Polar bears can get how big? 300 pounds, 500 pounds. This is a beefy one in the picture. 1,000 pounds mm -hmm. or over 1,500 pounds. 
While we're waiting for your answers, I want you to know, Lisa, we've got a, a family in Trinidad and Tobago that is watching and loved it. So we're, we're, we're past Texas. We've oh, wow. gone to the Caribbean. Six, 70 answers. There's 70. Wow, really split here. So the answer is the biggest of all of these. Polar bears, the biggest ever I saw was 1,700 pounds, they thought. Is that? I think, I think the biggest, biggest ever was in Alaska a couple decades ago, and it was about 2,200 pounds. But that set the record. I think about 1,700 currently is like the big males right now. Wow. Yeah. That's the big, big boys. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. kitten ridiculous. This is a crazy leaderboard. It's all over the place. As we go into our final <laughs> question, how can you help polar bears? We talked about some of these. You can check out the Polar Bears International site too, but call your elected representatives or vote if you're old enough. Lower your greenhouse gas emissions. Talk about what you learned today with family, friends, whoever, or hint, hint, nudge, nudge, maybe all of the above. Might be something that I like to do in a lot of cahoots. I don't know. Maybe it's a good one. 65 <laughs> one second ago, and our answer is all of the above. Ooh, good job. Way to go. Talk about everything, <laughs> right? The essence of what you guys do with Polar Bears International is you make sure that everyone knows these stories. And when you know these stories, you're informed, you're keen to share it, you're excited to take action, but you can't take action unless you know the story. So share them with your family and friends. It's really, really important. Totally. Yeah. Uh, Agile Dub was third, Nimble Sphinx was second, and Soaring Kitten for the win. If you are any of these people, let us know who you are in the chat. I don't think these are your actual names. I got a good feeling. <laughs> Please do share. Uh, and then we're going to head to our QA. Today, YouTubers, please feel free to share questions there. We'll take as many as we can. We've got about 20 minutes together. But let's head to Emeryville. Uh, Miss Massey's class first, uh, grade seven. If you guys want to come on in, unmute your mic. You are good to go. Hey. Hi. <laughs> oh, I right. Come on up. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know. You're on YouTube. It's crazy. But do you have any questions for Lisa? <laughs> All right, we're going to come back, guys, and you have a question, okay? Um, we're going to head to Stony Plain Central. If you guys have a question for us, come on in. Miss Smith's class. Hey, guys. Are polar bears are polar bears harmless? Are they harmless? I like this. That's a good question. So they're not harmless to people, but usually they would be. If you're smart in polar bear country and you have – a deterrent with you and you stay in a group of people and you secure your food, then you're pretty safe in polar bear country. But sometimes they do hurt people. I will say that. Um, though on average, polar bears are no more likely to actively hunt or kill people than black bears are. So they're not a man hunter, like sometimes they have a reputation as. Um, so the key is just being really smart and aware when there might be a polar bear around and then you can keep yourself safe. This is something I, I just want to harp on for a second because we hear this from shark researchers, we hear this from tiger researchers, like animals do not really want to hunt people. And if you right. take those necessary precautions, you are unlikely to ever be in a situation where your life is at risk because of one of these animals. And I mean, they are, they're a really powerful, large animal. They could eat you if they wanted to, but you've got to respect the territory that you're in, have things like the, the nifty radar system that's checking them out and making sure people mm -hmm. aren't in danger on that beach. And uh, that does go a long way. So I'm, I'm glad we got that question. Thanks guys. Yeah, it's uh, great. Our Hayes grade three, four group, uh, welcome in in BC. Do you want to unmute your mic? You are good to go. Hey. There we go. Perfect. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Uh, well, well, do polar bears have black skin? Yes. I have a question. <laughs> they do have black skin. Yep, yeah, that's true. I didn't touch on that. So, yeah, polar bears have clear fur and black skin. We don't really know why they have black skin. We think maybe it helps them retain some warmth. Um, but yeah, great, great question. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, awesome guys. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I like, I wish all kids would just like come in from like stage left and like, <laughs> so great. that was a nice touch. Um, Miss Evans class, welcome in. If you guys want to unmute your mic, uh, come on up. You are good to go. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yes, that's <laughs> another good way to enter. I like that as well, but unmute, unmute, can you hear you. Hi. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Hi. 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 Go have a seat. Okay, uh, can, Hi. Uh, can polar bears, uh, can, can polar bears swim? They swim. Yes, polar bears are excellent swimmers. They prefer to walk, 
because swimming takes a lot of energy and of course gets their fur wet, then it takes energy to dry their fur. But when they need to swim, they can swim for hundreds of kilometers or hundreds of miles at a time. We know one polar bear swam for almost nine days straight. Uh, it's really hard for cubs, but adults can swim when they need to. Yep. Nine days straight is wild. Yeah, really, it is wild. There's no That's other... I'm trying to think, are there any other creatures that can do like a, a land? I, again, they're sort of on that borderline, but like a land creature that can go that far or that long without... I don't know. I, I will say that bear lost a ton of weight during the swim and polar bears have a special technique. So they have a lot of body fat. So they do float pretty well and their feet just act like a rudder and then they doggy paddle and they can just go and go and go and go. So yeah, they're really unique that way as well. You know what? When I swim, I put on the flippers and I don't like the flippers. And I always want to use my arms and I say, that's not the technique. And I'm like, you know what? I can just say now I'm swimming like a polar bear and no one can just. Right. Doggy paddle. Polar bear paddle. Uh, yeah. We're going to go to San Antonio. I know Miss D's class, you guys have been having some tech trouble, but um, hopefully we can hear you. Maybe buffering of death. Maybe kind of sort of. I don't think so, unfortunately. So, Mr. Ambrosio, uh, if you want to put the question in the chat, please do, and then I'll come to you. I'll share it from there with Elisa in a second. YouTubers, you guys can get questions in too. Great Eight St. Joe's. I haven't seen your devices on yet, but I'd love to come to you in a second. But we'll head back to Emeryville, Ms. Massa's class. If you guys want to unmute your mic and ask a question this time, you are welcome to come on and join us. Grade sevens, do you have any questions? Maybe? <laughs> no, no questions. There's like an active, like, absolutely not. You taught them everything, at least. It was really good. <laughs> yeah, knocking off pictures. What are we doing here together? Knock it off. I don't know. Uh, Tony Plains, I'm going to head back to you guys. Come on in, Miss. Right. How long can, can polar bears live? Yes. Great question. So males can live maybe into their late teens or early 20s. Males fight each other for females in the spring and they can really hurt each other. So they don't live quite as long. Females can live longer. Females can live into about their mid 20s or maybe late 20s. Uh, so yeah, a little bit longer than males. And then for a polar bear in captivity, so in a zoo, they get a bit more pampered and have it a bit easier and they live a bit longer. And the oldest polar bear we know of lived to 42 years old and she lived in Winnipeg. Fantastic. So that's the record. Mm -hmm. We're going to head to Copperfield School in Alberta. Mr. Marino's class wants to know, why do they look white? You told us at the beginning, which was like a throwaway line. Oh, they're not white. They're here. What? But do tell. It sounds like crazy. <laughs> Good point. I could have elaborated on that. Um, well, their fur is transparent. So they've got these two thick layers of fur that are transparent. And the way that the light scatters on the hair, it makes it look white to our eyes. But when there's different colors in the sky, so when we see a polar bear in the sunset, for example, their fur can really pick up the oranges and the pinks from the sun. And it looks like we have a bunch of kind of pink bears out there. Uh, it's, it's just the way the light kind of works on them. So it's really neat hair. And their hair is also hollow, which I didn't mention. And the hollow hair also helps them trap warmth against their body. Pretty yeah. neat. Cool. If you have a pink polar bear picture, if you want to send that to me later, I'd love oh. to see Okay. I'll look for one. Good question. Okay. Um, from Ms. Debrosio's class, finding us through YouTube, it's like a quasi exciting many ways of getting the question in. Uh, how long can polar bears hold their breath? So nine days swimming, but being out of the water, of course, how long can they? The longest we know of that was recorded was three minutes and 10 seconds. And that was a polar bear, I believe, near Norway, who was diving for seaweed. He was super, super hungry. So he was holding his breath a lot to get some seaweed, which is not really, it's like a polar bear salad, not doing much, but fell in his tummy anyway. And so three minutes and 10 seconds is the longest recorded we have. I mean, it's pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but I think Kate Winslet yeah. was like double that in Avatar. So like, <laughs> yeah, come on, polar bears. Correct competition. Anyway, um, <laughs> group, we're going to come back three, fours. If you guys have another question for us, you're good to go. Hey. Um, when it's summer, what do polar bears do when they can't get food from the ocean? Yeah. That is a fabulous question. Yeah. So in the summertime, some polar bears in the high Arctic, they can stay on the sea ice, but even then it's not very good hunting. So they just kind of walk around or lay around a lot. For the bears that get stuck on land in the summer, they 
they do a lot of nothing. They do a lot of hanging out. Bears will like dig a kind of a day bed and do a lot of sleeping. They really try to conserve their energy because they know they're not having a lot of calories anytime soon. So they get very lazy. They find a good place to relax and they mostly just stay there. Um, bears that are super, super hungry might go in search of food in a community or something like that. But they're just kind of trying to save their energy. We used to think polar bears might have a version of hibernation for the summer, just like black bears and brown bears hibernate in the winter. Yeah. We thought, oh, maybe polar bears are changing their metabolism and helping them fast or not eat through the summer. But a bunch of research showed that they don't have that. So they really do need to protect their, you know, how much energy they're spending. So they do a lot of sleeping and yeah. chilling. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good question, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm going to head to YouTube briefly. Miss M, I'll come to you guys in just a second. And I want to note our Trinidad and Tobago group. If you guys want to share a question too, please yeah. feel free. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but Mr. Marino's group, group, are polar bears in danger or close to it? Polar bears are not currently considered endangered. They are on the IUCN, which is kind of the global conservation body. They're listed as vulnerable right now due to the threat of climate change. In the United States specifically, in Alaska, polar bears are on the endangered species list. Um, there's a higher level of awareness there. But ultimately, right now, we currently still have about 25,000 polar bears. So if we could stop time right now, the species would be okay. But they're listed as vulnerable because we know as we continue into the future and we continue warming that we will lose more polar bears as we lose their habitat. But right now, we consider them vulnerable. Yeah. Interesting that 26,000 represents just vulnerable, like not endangered. And so, I mean, we're used to thinking about people's populations where it's like, oh, right. Toronto has 3 million people and there's 8 billion of us in the world. And I mean, like, that's True. really, really rare. Very few animals have large, large populations. Um, so I'm really glad you mentioned that specifically. And if students are keen, uh, IUCNRedList.org, you can look up any species there, see what their conservation yeah. status is, see what's being done. It's a really great website as well. Um, Miss M, time flies and we're having fun with me. So we've got a few more questions uh, to come. Uh, Miss M's class, come on back in. Take us away. Unmute and you're good to go. <laughs> Hi. Um, how long do baby bears live with their moms? Yes, good question. Good question. A polar bear will stay with its mom for just under about two and a half years. The first year they're with their mom, they're called the cub of the year because that's when they're born that year. The second year after they turn one, they're called a yearling. And then a few months after they turn two, they'll be weaned and they'll go off by themselves. And that time between when they turn two and when they turn five, they're called a sub-adult. And those are kind of like the teenager years. And then at five years old, they're considered an adult. Uh, but yeah, cubs are with their mom for just under two and a half years. And they have to learn a lot about being a polar bear and navigating sea ice in that short period of time. And the cub of the year goes too. No, that's a great <laughs> yeah. that's very much. By the way, you re you repurposed my favorite analogy of an animal baby in the world, which is the size of a stick of butter. So thank you for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Every time. It's so nice. um, we've got time for a couple more. I want to note too, if anyone is really keen to follow up on this, polarbearsinternational.org. I mentioned it at the top mm -hmm. of the broadcast. So much more to learn there. And since I know you guys are very solutions oriented, I will highlight our art campaign on the go right now to envision a better and brighter and greener future by 2030. You can check that out. I'll also put in the chat for everyone all the submissions we've got so far, largely from the Ukraine, which has been really amazing to see kids mm -hmm. visualizing a really neat future. So I'll make sure at least I, I submit your way too. Um, Great Eight St. Joe's got a second device working and popped in in the nick of time. So welcome in, guys. Unmute your mic. Hi. Welcome in, guys. Yes, you. I know you're on camera now. <laughs> Hi. You pull their shit up! Say that again. <laughs> we got two devices. Let me kick out your other device. Let's see if this works. Try again. Unmute. Try again. Yeah, you gotta unmute this one though. You kept muting. Do polar bears shed? Do they shed? Oh, they, they do. They do shed. So every about every spring, as the temperature starts changing, polar bears shed their fur or molt. And that's when I talked about the fur trackers. That's part of our idea is that the fur trackers will just fall off when polar bears shed their fur, so they won't be stuck on the bears for too long. Yeah, great question, guys. And way to go getting a device working at the end of the broadcast. I appreciate that. Now, yeah. we've got a student that's been waiting at Stony Plain Center for like 10 minutes. So, I'm going to go to her first and then we're going to wrap up together. But come on in with one final question. Hi, Miss Smith. Bye. 
How soft is a polar bear's fur? Ooh, how soft? And you know this firsthand because you've been with polar bears for a while, tranquilized. So. Yeah, so I do have a piece of fur here. They're not that soft. And I hate to say that because they look so cute and fuzzy, but their fur actually feels pretty coarse. It's like maybe like a husky fur when it's feeling coarse or German Shepherd or something. So um, not very soft, but you know, still pretty, still pretty nice, but pretty coarse. I, I appreciate that. I mean, you could have told us anything because how are we gonna tell? And yeah, I could have lied. Oh, it's, fur, it's the best thing ever, but no, uh, not, yeah. not so much. Um, we have one more question from another YouTube group that hasn't got one in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I always lie. I always say it's the last question that I, you can really, Deal me with these sort of things. Um, Miss Patrick's class wants to know how big are polar bears' teeth? Ooh, yeah, here. Oh, 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 yeah, this is a skull. They're pretty big. You can see compared to my teeth. Yeah, mm. so their front canines can be with a couple inches or maybe seven centimeters or something like that. And then the, the front teeth can be smaller, and then the back teeth, the molars are smaller. But their front canines are pretty, pretty large. And that's to help them, of course, grab slippery seals and pull them out of the water and then eat them. Yeah. Cool. Props. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so to wrap up, we've got a couple more minutes. I just want to see if there's any final message you want to share with our kids today about how they can get involved, what they can do when they leave this broadcast. I'm going to link them into your website, of course, social media programs, anything else that we can share. Uh, but something to wrap us up with before we bring in everyone for a big thank you and farewell. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Check out our website. We've got lots of educational materials, curriculum and activities to do in our education center. And then like we've mentioned a couple of times, just talk about it. We need to change these societal conversations to normalize talking about climate change and our future. And we all deserve a protected future, especially you and definitely polar bears too. But the great news is we know we can do it. We know we can keep sea ice in the Arctic. We know we can protect polar bears and we know we can protect ourselves because we have the tools. We just need to shift the momentum to cleaner energies. So thank you for everything you're doing in your home, in your school, in your community. And I, yeah, I look forward to, you know, seeing what everyone gets up to in the future. Amazing, Alisa. I'm gonna for one leave this broadcast and just go inundate my wife with polar bear facts. Like, yeah, that's, <laughs> and take that for the next hour or so. So, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, if people want to check out more polar bears international programs, we've done a whole bunch with you and the rest of the team there on our YouTube channel. So, check that out polarbearsinternational.org. And as you well know, how we wrap up every broadcast, I'm going to bring in all our teacher friends to say a big thank you and farewell. So, Emeryville, Stony Point Center, Holy Miss Emmy, thank you so much. Thank you.